Afternoon, everybody. I am Stephen Smith. I'm with Linux Academy. And I just wanted to take a few minutes today to talk about preparing for the brand new certified OpenStack administrators exam through the OpenStack Foundation. Uh, I'm Stephen Smith, and I am a Linux and OpenStack instructor for Linux Academy. And uh, let's go ahead and get started in talking about what the certified OpenStack administrator exam is. Well, first of all, it is a virtual exam. Whereas you are not going to have multiple choice questions, you're actually going to be given scenarios where you are going to set up virtual machines. You are going to be asked to have particular rules set up, such as security group rules, to give access to those virtual machines. Uh, so it is a performance-based exam. And with that performance-based exam, um, it's going to be online meaning you can take it anywhere in the world. You don't have to go to a testing center to do it, which is kind of exciting, and it kind of gives the availability for more and more people to be able to take that exam worldwide. Um, the exam does cost $300, and it is actually administered through the Linux Foundation. Uh, and you can actually get one retake. So if you fail the first time, you get one retake for that one price of $300 when you first set up that exam. Uh, the exam time itself, you get two and a half hours to actually take the exam. So uh, it's roughly about 30 to 35 different scenario-based questions again. So one of the things I want to talk about today on performance-based exams is sometimes it's good to go through all the questions first. This is something that I like to do because I get an idea of if there's something later on in the exam that maybe I was kind of tripped up on, on a task that I had to do early in the exam, I kind of have an overview in my head of where are they going with this. Um, and it just gives me that straightforward, uh, easy, like hands-on idea of what I need to do. Um, again, the, the performance-based exam, um, the whole idea of this is that the OpenStack Foundation um, wanted to have not necessarily uh, this is not for deployment scenarios. Like This is not for an engineer that's going to go in and design an OpenStack environment or someone that's actually creating uh, specific applications that are going to go on it. This is a day-to-day -day administrator that's going to use this cloud. Um, and the OpenStack Foundation recommends that the people that are ready to take this exam have at least six months uh, to a year of experience um, administrating that OpenStack exam. And one of the ways that if, for instance, what's the reason that we all want to take certifications? One, it's either to better ourselves within our current position. We want to move up within the ranks and prove that we have what it takes to do a particular task. Or we want to move into the OpenStack cloud because that's what's you know, really moving right now in our environments, in our enterprises. But on top of that, Indeed.com is talking about the need and the growth rate right now of enterprises needing engineers for OpenStack. And as you can see from 2012 up to current, it's a steady incline uh, of just jobs being listed on Indeed.com right now for the need for OpenStack administrators. Um, so with that said, maybe you're a traditional operations guy. You know That could be, uh, I'm a VMware administrator, and I'm a storage administrator. Um, I, and I want to start working with an OpenStack. Um, how do I do that? Like, how do I get started with learning what OpenStack does and how to administrate OpenStack? Well, obviously, there are many different training providers. I, am, I don't want to be biased or anything, but Linux Academy absolutely does uh, OpenStack training. And the OpenStack Foundation, if you go to the marketplace, there are over a dozen different providers that do both on-site training. Uh, they do um, kind of what, what Linux Academy does is self-paced. Um, and then on top of that, while it's good to get traditional boot camp style training, that's not going to give you everything that you need to do to go pass an exam. I can't go really sit for five days, go through all the different scenarios, and learn OpenStack, and I'm ready to take the exam, because you're probably not going to be set up for success. So how do we practice using OpenStack? Maybe I don't have um, the resources or a full-blown OpenStack environment where I can play in. Well, there are many tools um, out there. Most of you probably are aware, if you are using anything with OpenStack at all right now, is like the DevStack environment. We can spin up DevStack environments and have you know 20, 30 minutes later on an Ubuntu server 
that has an all-in-one OpenStack environment, which is great because we can practice within that all-in-one environment on our laptop or our desktop at home and go through the different scenarios that you can find on the website, which is the objectives that will be on the Linux, uh, excuse me, the OpenStack website. You can go to openstack.org forward slash COA, and that will actually show you all the specific objectives I'll go through here in just a moment, uh, kind of from a 10,000 foot view. Um, but I want to talk real quick about the requirements that you're going to need. Um, again, since this exam you can take anywhere in the world, typically at home or the office, um, you're required to bring your own desktop or laptop, obviously. The exam uh, specifically requires use to either Chrome or the Chromium browser. Obviously, you need a reliable internet access that has a webcam and microphone because when you take the exam, how do they moderate an exam when you're at home? Well, what happens is they are going to connect to your webcam and they want to see 360 degrees all the way around you. There's no one there to help you pass the exam. Um, they are also, also going to install an application on your computer to make sure that you don't have any key logging going on, uh, any other websites that you might use to cheat and get answers to the exam. Um, however, I will also say um, you are able to use docs.openstack.org. Um, that is the only website that you can go to through the exam. So perhaps you have a large CLI-based question on the command line. Uh, sometimes that's hard to remember. Um, so you still have the resources to go to docs.openstack.org to find out what it is this full syntax allows me uh, to get going. Um, finally, the OpenStack environment that you'll be taking the exam on, you'll have two tabs. One is the GUI-based Horizon dashboard that you use to administrate, obviously, OpenStack with. And second, you'll have a tab that is your terminal. So in other words, you're not going to have an SSH PuTTY client if you're on Windows or the terminal in your Linux workstation and or um, Mac uh, workstation. You, you're actually doing that through the browser. So real quickly, I just want to give a, uh, the core OpenStack services of what you're actually being tested on. Again, uh, to find out the exhaustive list of the OpenStack Foundations exam, you can go to openstack.org forward slash COA requirements, and that will give you everything that you're going to need uh, as far as objective-wise. So what are we testing on on the OpenStack Foundation certification? Well, first of all, we're going to talk about Compute, which is our Nova service. We'll use the dashboard of Horizon. We'll talk about object storage for Swift, block storage for Cinder, networking, which is our Neutron service. And we'll be working a little bit with both orchestration, which is Heat, and then obviously working with image service, such as Glance. So the Compute Nova services just a rundown high level, you really need to understand how to manage flavors. In other words, how can I create custom size flavors? Um, what are flavors? Why do I need flavors? Which, you know, obviously are the size of our virtual machines. Um, you clearly need to know how to launch, shut down, terminate instances. You need to manage your key pairs, which gives us access for SSH into those instances. Uh, we need to know how to manage our security group rules. So, you know, are we setting up a web stack? And with that web stack, what ports do we need? Do we need to open up port 80? Do we need to open up port 88? What does your application need? So we need to understand how to manage security group rules. Um, we really need to know how to manage instant snapshots. Why do we need snapshots? Can we take a snapshot from an instance and create a new instance or create even out of that snapshot a uh, put it into our templates later on to spin up you know ongoing continuous integration within our application stacks. And then finally, we really need to know how to manage quotas. In other words, how many virtual CPUs um, can a tenant or client or department within my organization within their own tenant, how many, how many virtual machines can they even spin up? Or within my network team, how, much, how many subnets can they spin up? Things like that. We need to know how to manage uh, quotas. With object storage Swift, um, it's, um, if you're not a storage guy in the traditional IT sense and you're you know, more of a, um, I'll use VMware like, as a traditional thing, <laughs> uh, if you're, if you're used to spinning up virtual machines within VMware, you're probably more of an operations technical guy that doesn't work with storage, and you might be a networking guy, but not a whole lot of storage. With that said, Object Storage Swift is one of the things that you really need to put, I just want to emphasize a lot of time and study on and practicing with. Uh, you, for example, you need to understand how to do access. Um, being able to do expire objects. So here's the thing. Um, 
with Swift, there's not a lot of graphical user interface easy things to actually manage Swift storage. So you really need to understand how to use the CLI. So focus very much on that. Um, storage policies, uh, how to man monitor the space for our storage node that Swift is actually deployed on. And obviously, we need to know how to manage the permissions on our containers that we're setting up within Swift. Does this container need to have a public access? Is this going to be used for something within a, an application layer that's going to pull down information from that public access container? Or is it a private container that we're really using internally, et cetera? Uh, block storage, which is Cinder, uh, you need to understand how to manage volumes, uh, mount volumes to instances, and take volume backups. Um, we also need to know how to restore backups to new volumes. Um, you may or may not get a lot of questions like that on the exam. Um, and then finally, um, how do we encrypt volumes? Um, is, can we do that with the GUI? Do we have to do that with the CLI? Things like that we need to take a pay attention to for the block storage portion of the exam. Um, the networking, Neutron, um, this, this is going to spend a lot of time on. I would probably, I think it's 15 to 20%. Again, if you go to that website that I mentioned at the beginning that I'll show you here in a moment at the end, uh, that will give you the actual how much percentage of the exam is going to be around it. Neutron and Compute, though, Nova and Neutron are going to be your two biggest percentages of passing the exam. Um, we need to know how to manage security rules again. Uh, we need to manage quotas. Again, how many subnets can I allow my tenant to use, et cetera. Um, you need to understand how to manage network interfaces on the compute instances themselves. Um, so in other words, we need to know how to troubleshoot network issues for the tenant network. How do we enter the namespace on the virtualization side of our network? How can we run TCP dump to take a look at the virtual side of our network, et cetera? Um, also, you need to know how to manage external networks. So for example, if you are a large provider um, with a lot of tenants that want to bring in their own public IP space, maybe different tenants have their own public IP spaces that's not being shared, um, how do I add, uh, as an administrator, a secondary line of public IP addresses and then put that into Neutron and then allow that into our tenants? Um, there, there's quite a few questions based around that. Um, Finally, with Neutron, you need to understand how to assign floating IP addresses to those running instances, which basically, at the end of the day, how do I give public access to this instance or hook it up to a load balancer later on? Um, orchestration heat, there is not a lot of emphasis on this on the exam, but you do need to know how to manage it. Um, so how do we launch stacks using heat orchestration, using templates, which is the hot templating? Uh, how do we use orchestration CLI and the dashboard? Because you are able within the exam to use both. For example, how to create a heat orchestration template that matches a specific scenario. And how do we update that stack if we want to change an ongoing stack that has, for example, four virtual machines? How do we upscale that using heat to, say, eight virtual machines? You know, we need to know how to do that. How do we get detailed information about that stack in general? In other words, how do we query that stack that's currently running from the CLI? Definitely need to know that. And then finally, the image management glance. We need to know how to deploy new images to OpenStack instances, how to manage image types and backends, how to uh, manage images, for example, how to update and add and remove those images from our environment. And obviously, we need to know how to verify the image service. I say that. Just know how to troubleshoot it. At the end of the day, know how to troubleshoot all of the services. So while we have all the different core services that we need to know for the OpenStack Foundation exam, within each and every one of those categories, we need to know how to also troubleshoot them. How do we analyze the log files? How do we analyze the storage status, such as the local and block objects? Uh, manage OpenStack services, such as restart them. Is one of those services stopped right now? If so, why? And how can we get that back up and running? Uh, we need to do backup and restore as an OpenStack instances. And we need to know how to troubleshoot the network performance. Are there bottlenecks on our network? Is there a between two particular compute nodes with our GRE tunnel that's you know, supplying that network across however many nodes we might have in our environment? What are the things that we need to look at on the network side, both the physical host and virtual host, that we might need to troubleshoot? Um, 
so uh, you really understand all the components that make up the cloud as well. Um, for example, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, platform as a service, what's the difference between private and public networks, and be well versed in managing the OpenStack services using the Horizon GUI, but also the CLI. Again, we can look at the full objectives by going to openstack.org forward slash COA forward slash requirements. I highly suggest you go there, take a look at those requirements. And um, finally, um, I just want to tell you thank you for the time. And <laughs> um, slides will be available afterwards. So uh, just wanted to give a big shout out. Um, again, check out linuxacademy.com if you are interested in getting training. We, we provide a lot of OpenStack training, not just for the brand new certification through the OpenStack Foundation, but also through Marantis Red Hat OpenStack platform, uh, both Medium and the, so the MCA100, MCA200, for instance. Uh, finally, find me on Linux Academy on Freenode on IRC. I'm Stephen-LA. Uh, you can take a look at our Twitter at linuxacademy.com or my personal Twitter at Stephen's cloud. I talk quite a bit about training and some of the new updates on the exams and, and things like that. So thank you very much.